It, it really is a great pleasure to be here. And I'm re really very sorry that I haven't been able to be with you throughout the whole of the day. I, I know you've had some excellent speakers today. Unfortunately, I had to uh, go somewhere to the north of Leicester, to a somewhat smaller city that is famous for its association with a mythical outlaw. <laughs> we have a real king. Um, to be serious, I, I, I'm not going to talk for you very long, but I, I do want to just say a little bit about um, what the discovery of Richard's body here in Leicester means for the city uh, and how it is our determination to continue to work together with the Richard III Society to ensure that Richard's real story is told and is told effectively here in Leicester so that those who have been prompted into an interest about Richard by this discovery and by the television programmes and all of the publicity that surrounded it are able to follow up that interest and to share your understanding of the reality rather than the myth of Richard. Before I say anything more though, I, I do really think I ought to begin with some words of thanks. Some words of thanks for what is undoubtedly a truly spectacular piece of work in finding the bones and interpreting the results of what was found there. You've, I've just got a flavour of it there, and I've obviously heard a number of, um, had a number of occasions when that interpretation has been explained to me, and it really has been quite remarkable. Quite remarkable work by the university, Leicester University, obviously by its archaeological um, uh, people, but, but also by such a, a wide range of the uh, disciplines that are represented in this, in, in this great university, and I don't know whether uh, the Vice Chancellor is here today, but I, I do uh, want, again, to put on record my, my thanks to, uh, to Sir Bob Burgess uh, and all of those associated with the university and putting it together. Those of you who were either present or witnessed the um, news conference when the results were revealed could not fail to be impressed, not just about the way in which it was told, which was stunning, but also the authority of those who were explaining the way in which they had applied their understanding and their academic discipline to the task of interpreting what had been discovered. It really was remarkable. I want also to take this opportunity to say a few words of thanks to Leicester Cathedral, because they, they've been involved right from the start. As you know, the, the uh, the body was found uh, within, literally, within the shadow of Leicester University. Uh, and, of course, uh, their interest in, in Richard is not new. The memorial stone, which I think the Society themselves had, uh, had funded some years ago, uh, has been cared for and cherished by the, by the cathedral over the years. Uh, and their commitment to ensuring that Richard continues to be honoured is, uh, I think, something uh, very much to be, uh, to be praised. But, of course, it's the society itself that deserves our thanks. The support that they have given is remarkable. Philippa, of course, particularly, <laughs> the embodiment of the enthusiasm for, um, uh, for undertaking uh, this, uh, this quest, approaching it with charm, with, with common sense, with a willingness to learn, with a spirit of cooperation, and, of course, as everybody who knows her will, uh, will recognise, with relentless determination. Uh, I'd like to thank the Society uh, and, and Philippa for, for all that they've done, uh, and particularly also uh, on behalf of the Society, uh, the work that uh, John, Dr. John Ashdown Hill has, has done, uh, both now but previously in the genealogical research that first pointed to the exciting possibility that uh, there could be a uh, modern DNA match for Richard, which of course you know, did prove ultimately to be the clincher. Although I think like, you, like, like me, many of you would have felt that the initial discovery in pre-DNA times would have been proof beyond all doubt and that actually the DNA was in, in, in a sense something that we find necessary today, but perhaps really for me certainly, and I guess for many of you, uh, was something that uh, really proved what we already knew. Um, I'm just gonna say a little bit about what the discovery means uh, to the people of Leicester because it is hugely significant. Obviously, in a national and international sense, it you know, re rewrites uh, the history books. But from Leicester's point of view, it enables us to use the um, discovery of Richard's body, the events of 1485, all of the 
story of the end of the Plantagenet era and the beginning of the, of the Tudor era, it enables us to use that to tell that important chapter and how it relates to that chapter in the history of our city, but also to relate it to uh, a uniquely unbroken uh, story of the history of our city, which dates back some 2,000 years. Uh, it's not something we've been very good as a city of shouting about, but it happens. We have the largest piece of non-military Roman masonry anywhere in the UK, in the Roman baths. It happens. We've got a f wonderful uh, Isled uh, medieval castle hall, reputedly one of the finest in Europe. Lovely guild hall, which we're using at the moment for the, uh, for, uh, for, for the, exhi for the exhibition. Wonderful heritage from the, from the Industrial Revolution on through the, through, through, through the 19th century, the growth of Leicester as an industrial centre. We have a lot to tell, and of course this is a vital chapter in England's history, but also an opportunity for us to relate that chapter in England's history to the story of Leicester's history. I've said on previous occasions, and those of you who've heard me in Leicester before will, will know, that uh, I believe that Leicester's a city that ha has suffered in the past with a bit of an inferiority complex, a collective inferiority complex. Uh, I think this is an opportunity for us to say to ourselves, get over it. <laughs> now, what we're actually doing is to, as I said, relate this to the story of Leicester, also to relate it to uh, some of the reconnection, the physical reconnection of the modern retail heart of Leicester with the historic old town, it's an opportunity for us to reconnect Leicester with its county, which is, of course, an important part of its relationship over the, over the centuries, and, of course, I mean, where, where Bosworth is. And clearly what we do in Leicester to tell this story needs to be related to what our county colleagues do beyond the boundaries, out in Bosworth particularly, to help tell that story and to paint the, paint the full picture. And, of course, you won't be surprised to know it's something that I'm determined we should use to bring people to our city that we should actually bring them here, tell them the story of Richard, the story of 1485, and relate it to that, to that wider, wider history. And you won't be at all surprised, I'm sure, to know that there's a mayor I'm interested, and I'll be frank, in some of the economic benefits of that, because bringing, bringing visitors to our city is good for our economy. And uh, you know, you, I think you'd be, you, know, you, you would be sceptical if I was to suggest that it was anything other than that. But it is more than that, much more than that, and it is a passion that I know you have to tell the reality and to tell the story properly and in full. Amongst the things, of course, that we've previously cooperated on, I've mentioned the memorial slab in the, uh, in the cathedral. We have, of course, had in the past the very generous funding by the Society of a plaque in Greyfriars, and we have most particularly the wonderful statue that the Society funded back. I was checking it out, astonishingly, some 33 years ago, in 1980, yeah. a lovely statue of Richard that is in Castle Gardens. And we've been debating, really, whether that actually deserves to be somewhere a bit more prominent in future, and we're very interested in people's thoughts on that, as to whether the tranquility of Castle Gardens is the place for it, or whether, indeed, it deserves to be out and to be seen, because uh, it is a lovely sculpture done by James Butler, some, some will recall, uh, and as you will know, James Butler has done quite a lot of other pieces, two or two others here in Leicester, but quite a number across, across the country, which are, are very fine indeed. So, um, and actually, I should say, I, I had the prescience back, back in 1980 to buy the maquette. Um, <laughs> so if anybody wants to know where it is, <laughs> it's been on my, it's been on my um, hall table for the last 33 years. It... Uh, like the statue, is now somewhere, somewhere rather more prominent. Anyway, um, as I say, um, a, lot of, a lot of opportunities here for us to, 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 to tell the story. We have, as I hope some of you will have seen, and if you haven't, I hope you will take the opportunity to see, done an excellent uh, temporary exhibition at Leicester's Guildhall. Remarkable piece of work by our museum service and uh, a lot of help from, from others outside, which is getting... Um, it was getting over a thousand visitors a day. That's remarkable. It really is considerable interest, and uh, I think a flavour of what we can do when we develop our longer-term visitor centre, which will be in the building next door to the actual dig. Purchased it. Um, 
setting about developing in there something that will tell the story of Richard, tell, relate it to that period, of course related to Leicester, but do it with respect for Richard and respect for the reality of Richard. And I'm really looking forward to opening that. It'll probably be about 12 months from now, to be, to be honest, if we do it properly. Um, we've got a creative director in post. We've got uh, all, all of those who are, are necessary and all the funding in place to, to make it happen. But I'm determined that it should be ready so that at the time of the reinterment of the body, we are able to actually enable the interest that will result from that to be channeled into something that will actually enable people to, to understand and, and to hear the story. Um, I'm also very keen to give further encouragement to the university's archaeologists. And I've, I've talked um, with Richard Buckley uh, again uh, about further excavation. Um, Richard's realistic uh, and you know, recognises that actually what was found with the dig that we had uh, during the summer on into the autumn um, has told an awful lot of what there is to be found out. But he also, I think, realises that there are other bits that could well be discovered. Uh, and they are, I'm delighted to say, considering a fuller investigation of some of the parts of the church, particularly some of those that are in the area of the buildings that we've uh, more recently purchased. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I think that's probably enough for me, but just a couple more words. First to say that the recreation of the face from uh, Professor Caroline Wilk Wilkinson is astonishing. It really is quite remarkable. Um, I've said, you know, that those who've done work here in Leicester have done something astonishing. Well, so have those who've collaborated from other places and particularly um, from Dundee University. Um, I hope that it will be possible for us to have it as a splendid centerpiece in the visitor center when we, when we develop it. But um, I do really just want to conclude by saying that we have only just begun the process of ensuring that we take this opportunity to tell the story of Richard, to tell the true story of Richard, and to tell it together. And I just want to thank the Richard III Society and one of your extraordinary members who have made it happen. I can just say that I know we're all very grateful to you and the people of Leicester are most grateful to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Would you like a question? Okay, well, all right. John, there we go. Okay, off you go. Is that all right? Is, that, is it working? Um, you, listed, um, you listed some of the monuments that the Richard III Society has put up over the years in Leicester. Um, unfortunately, you, meant, you, you didn't mention one that I was involved with some years ago, which was um, uh, near the river, next to the broad-bent Victorian plaque, um, pointing out that the broad-bent Victorian plaque is in error, when it says that Richard III lies somewhere near there. I just wondered whether we could possibly persuade you to take that plaque down. I, I have actually volunteered to go do it personally, <laughs> but they told me it's on private property and they didn't want to see the mayor prosecuted. Um, uh, it, 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 it's funny, my, my daughter lives just around the corner. She lives 50 yards from there. I, 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 so I pass it quite frequently. And every time I pass it, I think we must get it down. I think more likely, actually, because it is quite interesting that there's a story of you know, uh, people misunderstanding and misrepresenting history. It's probably better to put up a plaque next to it, <laughs> explaining the reality and explaining how mistaken they were and how they came to be mistaken and how easy it is for historical myths to become accepted as historical realities. 